and welcome to another edition of The One Team We Agree On. I'm Jillian. And I'm Kyle. How are you doing today? Um, Pretty good because uh, it is Christmas Eve Eve when we're recording this. It is. And the season's upon us. It's that time of year. Randy and eggnog, there's plenty to share. Yeah, yes. I, could, I could start singing it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but anyway, on today's show, um, we thought we'd drop a little fun episode. Um, in a lot of union news as of late, um, you know, recently they had the locker room sale. So Jillian, loving fashion as she does, we're going to review some of the uh, slides and um, kind of some of the merchandise we got. And uh, the schedule came out. So... I want to talk a little bit about the CONCACAF Champions Cup and the uh, 2024 MLS season. But before we get started, what are we wearing today? Well, as the season's upon us, I am wearing my Sons of Ben Ugly Christmas Sweater sweatshirt. And I'm wearing my Fight for Philly hoodie. It's really comfortable. I um, got this as a Christmas gift for Yeah, there. I think my mom got that for you. Yeah, so... Thought we'd wear some holiday themed stuff, although mine's yours more, isn't holiday themed. Yeah, it was more gift. of a Christmas gift, but still. Yeah. But um, anyway. Um. Yeah. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe or follow, and uh, please leave comments. We love interacting with you. You can find us on all the um, social main social media places. That is, um, you know, we're on Facebook at the one team we agree on, on Instagram at the same, and we are here. Um, we are most active on Twitter, actually, I would say, or yeah. as exit, I, I'm rebelling and I'm just probably going to call it Twitter forever, yeah. but we're on there at TOTWAG. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube as well. And we post this podcast on all major podcasting platforms. So find us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's dive into the uh, locker room sales. So on, um, I believe that was this Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday we went down. Um, and a little different. So first impressions for me, having been there last year, um, last year we were in the actual locker room for the sale. So this year it was a little different. They had us in the stadium club. So for those of you that are season ticket members or have stadium club passes, you know that's um, up at the top level. Um, the nice little area you can watch games and little restaurant, bar, lounge, sometimes players. Um wives um hang out there i believe or at least at one time they did when we did stadium tour last year they told us that so it was kind of a cool um atmosphere i thought um what'd you think of that yeah so i thought that was cool uh so we got there at i think 4 45 or so yeah. and so we waited in line uh the doors would open around 5 30 I, th I think they opened a little bit early i feel like but uh, so it was cold. We were waiting out there for a little bit, and uh, we have some video of that. Yeah. Um, so let's do that. that. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. So, so we were there about forty minutes early, and went straight for my uh, place of work. And uh, so that was it was already fairly long at that point, but not ridiculous. We knew some people were there much earlier, so the line filled up like very quickly. Though after we got there, it got quite long. It point. did. It did. And uh, once that happened, um, they showed us right up into the area. Um, yeah, so into the stadium club. And so once we were up there, they had the line snaking around and uh, it was nice relief from, of course, <laughs> being out in the cold. And uh, it, I'm sure it was nice, too, for the people who had never been up there. I'd been up there a couple of times. But uh, so it, it, you know, they had lots of uh, tables like on a line then you would go down mm -hmm. and you could take a look at all the stuff that they were offering for sale yeah and so a few things immediately that i realized from like last year was it felt a lot more organized okay mm -hmm. last year i got there i want to say around maybe 20 minutes after uh we did um i think i was there like five or ten after five all right and the line was much longer mm -hmm. first thing Second thing, uh, when we got in there, it was kind of, there was like this meandering path, but it kind of just like, I think they were like, oh man, there's a lot more people here than we thought they were. This year it was like, okay, we're prepared for it. We have everything organized. Um, just a few things that, and before we go back to sharing that I, I noticed, um, one, um, last year while we were waiting to go in and select our merchandise, 
there were i would say people coming out with loads of like jerseys shorts apparel this year when we were there i heard people saying oh you're only allowed two shorts per person and then what was it like one small short sleeve one short sleeve one long long sleeve sleeve or goalkeeper kit right and 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 that was really it um so they were really limiting which you know if you wanted if you saw like with the goalkeeper kits there's a couple colors we had wanted but it also really gave people that were there the opportunity to get shorts and to get stuff so i was fine with that it wasn't you, you said last year yeah it was really picked over by the time you got there Certain areas where I mean like they the still had the, stuff. they still had some of the goalkeeper stuff, but like some of the shirts, the warm up tops that we we got, um, stuff like that was kind of slim picking. So I did like that. Um, and then we'll go back here share some more here. So a couple more um, go in here. So a couple more things. So when we kind of got in, they kind of had a line as you see where the people are picking. You kind of started out with the shorts line Mm -hmm. and it kind of went all the way down. And then it kind of led to like the warm up tops and then the keeper kits and then all the signed apparel. Right. So they had lots of different shorts. They had things from 2019 to 2020, um, the player shorts. And there's a lot of Union 2 stuff. Yeah. And that was cool to how they had. And uh, shout out to our ticket rep, Noah, who was actually at this. He was doing a really nice job of like telling everybody what players they are right he had a list right there of whose shorts they were okay what the numbers were so if you want to get your favorite youtube person you could do that and then um there's some more of the uh players yep and then they had some goalkeeper shorts yep and we picked up a pair of them so we'll show them off then and the goalkeeper shirts as well yep and so they were blank and the cool thing was, of course, then they had a place where you could get Andre Blake's name and number, yeah. um, you know, printed onto there for 10 bucks. And, and that was a really good deal because I know it's the same, it's like 15, 20 at yeah. least because I was kind of like, ah, we'll just take it to one of the local places. We'll get it done for like 15. Right. It was like 10 bucks. I'm like, ah. I was like, may as well do it. I mean, it's yeah. just 10 bucks more. I'm already shelling out this money for this jersey. 10 more bucks. What's the difference? I'll just get it done because. Because Andre Blake is one of my all-time favorite union players. And, Absolutely. Um, so why not? <laughs> so, yeah. And then we uh, kind of went through that. And then they had uh-huh. all the uh, tweets. They had some goalkeeper mitts, but they were long picked up since we got there. Yeah. So I took this picture. And basically, uh, Kyle – so I didn't go to the locker room sale last year, but Kyle did. And he – picked up some things for me um as many of you know Stuart Finley one of my favorite union players of all time and he did get me some of um Stu's shorts last year I actually didn't see like any number four stuff not you know whether it was there's none left from last year or if people already got it but anyway he had told me last year that he had thought about getting the um Stu signed cleats for me and but he didn't want to pay like you know how much they were and and i was fine with that. actually i think i was at practice and you were trying to get a hold of me yeah and i was coaching and i didn't see my phone but i was like that yeah that's fine because i don't want to pay that much anyway um because i at least have a signed jersey of his but so there's like all these pairs of Stu's cleats though and they're 150 bucks each though they're signed by him but and we do know um you know someone who got one of his pairs shout out evan yeah. um but yeah, I I saw him like uh I would love to, but yeah, I'm already paying for this goalkeeper jersey, and so that's what I'm treating myself to. Yeah, I mean, and it was it was really nice, and then the checkout line, and that led right to the checkout line, and then he went back out. I I thought it was really smoothly done, um, much more than last year. If I think the overall thing. Uh, it was a much more organized event. Maybe they didn't have as much selection. I felt like some of the stuff I was seeing last year, like there were some jerseys and stuff. Um, I think there was like some of like the special event t-shirts and stuff. I think they were going on, on, on for sale. So, but at the same time, I mean, tops are what 30 to hundred dollars shorts are 20 mm-hmm. to 30 depending on what you got it really depending on if you got like a blank or a a player mm-hmm. um 
So overall, I know, went to the uh, Philadelphia Union Foundation. So it went to, you know, good cause. And yeah. what were your overall impressions? And would you recommend this to somebody? Yeah, I would dec definitely recommend going. It's worth, especially if you have some gear you want to get. And if you have a particular player you really like, you can see if you can get lucky and find their stuff. But overall, I thought it was cool. It was worth going down, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I went. And, uh, you know, honestly... It was nice just going down there. I missed going to the soup and yeah. and you know they didn't do a holiday party. Not that we're, yeah, I mean I mean I didn't hear anything about yeah. anything so um nothing this year which was strange. So, so at least they did something. Yeah, I mean yeah, so we're going to show off what yeah, we got let's, here. Let's show off uh what we got. Okay. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can definitely check this out. Okay, and I'll just if you're just listening on the pod, um I will do my best to describe. So, the first thing we got, well, I should say, well, let me show you my favorite thing I got. Um anyway, so I got a gray long sleeve goalkeeper jersey. Okay? And um it's like what Andre would wore this year, I believe. Um but it has Blake at 18 on the back. Um, so we got that printed and uh, it's a brand new one. So they were selling um, brand new, like with the tags on um, ones. And then we'll keep in the goalkeeper kind of area here. Uh, we have some kind of teal colored um, goalkeeper shorts and they are number one. So we know they're Matt Freeze. Yeah. Okay. So um, got them. And uh, next... We have some yellow shorts. Yeah. Okay. And these are number seven. They are used. So, Mikel Ua. So, he must have used them at some point. Yeah. I was joking, like, are they, would they be the ones maybe he was wearing in the cup? And I'm like, well, I doubt that. I doubt that. <laughs> but yeah, number seven. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, got that. And next up, we have, I picked this one out. A number eight warm up top, gray warm up top here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of course that is Brujo Martinez. All right, so um, that. Okay, here we have um, this is uh, one with tag on it still. This is um, yeah, this is have a number. This is one kind of like what Jillian had got me earlier, another cut off kind of like that cut so i wanted to get another one yeah he had um we look there were ones with numbers too but he wanted a blank one because he wants to actually wear it and work out in it yeah because he likes the tank you like the one i got you yeah. that was a christmas gift last year okay and we have also a number seven mikhail ua yeah. warm up uh top here uh partial zip at the top yeah. there so that is nice i really like the one i got day game um yeah so I was like, you know they're really comfortable i like the other one that i've worn a couple times on the show um you know just with the little thumb sleeves on it where you can put it yeah. thumbs up really nice especially in the fall winter so yeah and then um when we were checking out they gave us a freebie uh these uh snake neck gaiters mm -hmm. okay with the philadelphia union foundation on them so that's pretty cool i think that'll come in handy when it's really cold out because as you know they announced the uh, schedule the schedule we are going to be freezing yeah um uh, yeah so, so yeah overall it was a great event but uh let's transition and talk to it's a good segue into what we're talking it is today. a very good segue so um this past week we um kind of got the dates for the uh concacaf champions league uh Ch champions league champions cup uh, over or under how many times this year I'm going to say Champions League. CCC doesn't roll off the tongue. No, it's like CCL. Yeah, it's Champions Cup. It's like Twitter. I'm going to keep calling it Twitter, right? Um, and then on Wednesday they had released the MLS regular season schedule. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's let's dive into the CCC first. Um, Union, uh, I believe it was last week uh, during the draw, uh, drew. Um, a familiar foe in from uh 2021 uh in the CCL. Uh they had played uh Deportivo Saprisa um mm -hmm. out of Costa Rica. Yeah. Um and they in 2021 had won on aggregate 5-0. Um again this year they are, will be playing them in the opening round. Um Saprisa, for those of you who don't know, um don't follow the uh Costa Rica. Uh, Prima 
division. Uh, they won it this year. They won the, um, I believe it's called the Apertura. Um, and of course, everybody's like, what, Apertura? Um, the fall uh, segment of their league. And um, they were the second highest ranked of pot two. Now, people are like, what's pot two? Basically, it's on uh, CONCACAF's uh, league, uh, rankings. They rank all the clubs. So you had your top pot, which, of course, included Philadelphia Union. Then after a certain point, you basically they gave the next pot, and then they basically paired pot one with pot two. Um, the, the highest uh, pot two was Vancouver. They were at the 33rd ranked club. And Spruce came in at 44. So a really tough opening match. We know in 2021, this is a very physical match. Mm -hmm. um, and again, anytime, you know, you get into these leagues, um, they're going to be physical. And I think now that both these teams have played each other recently, and when I say recently, you know, mm -hmm. two, three years, um, it's going to be a good game. So, um, so yeah, the union's going to open up the season in Costa Rica on February 20th. And then, the return leg is going to be in Chester on February 27th, which is a Tuesday, I believe. And it's yeah, not going to be. Tuesday. And the game time is like late. It's like 8.15 or something like yeah. that. So bundle up, people. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Uh, two questions. Um, first, have you ever wanted to visit Costa Rica? Eh, not really. But um, I mean, I've heard of people going there for different things missions trips or i hear, um, I hear the future is amazing yeah like i hear it's definitely one of the nicer yeah. um countries in central america to go to in terms of just like you know safety and i've heard um, i've heard very good things just like the I should say just the overall like it's nicer yeah so if you've it's definitely a country I would love to go and check out some of the nature and landscape. Yeah. Um, so if you've ever been to Costa Rica, let us know. We, we'd love to know what you, your experiences were. And um, yeah, not saying we would go to this one, but um, what are your overall thoughts of the matchup? Uh, so honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to be quite honest. I didn't know much at all about mm -hmm. this team. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And my I meaning, I got this. I'm like more like, Wow, it's gonna be cold. That was my first. <laughs> that was my first. Um, yeah, my first reaction there. So my overall thought is it's gonna be a really good challenge for the mm -hmm. union. Um, starting off the season. Um, obviously, anything we say in this episode, we gotta still see how the rest of free agency and the transfer window plays out. But you know, this this is gonna be a good challenge. Um, and really, you know, when we look at the bracket. After this game, um, you know, the Union would then play Pachuca, mm -hmm. who we played friendly against uh, mm -hmm. two years ago. Yep, when we saw Richard Odada play. Yes, we did. Never Shout forget. out to Richard Odada. And then uh, from there, I think we would play, it's like the winner. Would, and again, you will see how the bracket, but there's a, there is a window where the union, there's a bracket where the union would basically play all Liga MX if they were to make mm -hmm. the final. So you would have them. And then I think it's Tokua. I forget how you pronounce that one. Somebody, if, if you're in the comments, mm -hmm. um, please let us know. I probably should know that one um, in the quarterfinal. And then they would play Club America again, another potential rematch in the semifinals uh, from 2021 in the semifinals and then they would probably get there's a lot of mls teams on the other side but then you also have t grades and you got monterey sitting there so there's a good chance you're going to see either monterey or t grades out of that side mm -hmm. in the championship and so we've been talking about last year you know all about the travel mm -hmm. and so we had done and shout out to jose he kind of did a little thing i kind of helped him with it with just based on what we know right now at this point on december 23rd what the unions travels like that doesn't include mm -hmm. leagues club playoffs and any additional mm -hmm. so i wanted to see let's say the union got to the finals what would that mileage look like well if they were to do that and let's say the final is in tigres or monterey the union and just in CCC alone, we'll have traveled approximately 15,000 miles. Now, you think about that. Last year, they did around 40. That's 
that's a grind just to start out the season after a month of love. So I'm really excited. If you haven't been to a, a CCC game yet, definitely check them out. It's yeah. an experience. And I know their weeknight, they can be late. If you have kids, we get it. But come out. It's a great time. It's the, a great time. And the teams, a lot of these fans travel. Yeah, I do. mean, so we want to also fill I mean, up. They had like people walking through the parking lots with like their stuff, their food cell. Stands and yeah. Food stands. It's great. So definitely check this out. Um, and then let's get into it because I made kind of like I did for my prediction last year. Wanted to uh kind of get the jump start on our schedule. So I'll share the screen here. And so I kind of broke this down a little bit. And um here is the uh schedule for 2024. So um the light blue is all the potential uh ccc dates so you can see how you know it's going to go all the way from february to june um just a few thoughts on this early on in the season we see a lot of the west coast teams the western conference teams coming in um early on and then by the time they get done really with i think their last western conference team is real assault lake in april they're playing the Eastern Conference the rest of the way. So yeah. I wonder if that was by design this year. I imagine so by MLS to kind of keep teams, you know, or what um in their conference to cut down the travel as the season goes on. I, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really look at any other team schedules, but I, I just was a thought I had. Um and then really kind of Moving through, you know, lots of summer home games. Yeah. Um, should the Union advance to the finals, there's a good chance they'll probably bump the Montreal game. Um, and then, of course, the League's Cup break again. Um, and that will be uh, July 26th to August 25th. Um, and again, if the Union were to make the final, or kind of like what we did last year with FC Dallas, yep. they're going to have to bump that August a 24th date against Columbus. And then we really kind of, after League's Cup, you know, it kind of, then we go back to um, regular season play, and then you have your um, MLS playoffs on right around, I would guesstimate, October 23rd through December 7th with the Cup Final on some. So, again. We got kind of a gauntlet at the end there. So Well, <laughs> and, and I'm glad you brought that up. So, yeah, I mean, really when I look at this schedule, I mean, starting with, like, July 17th with New England, mm -hmm. you got New England, Nashville, Columbus. Then you can say, well, and then there's Red Bull. Who, you, you just never know what they're going to be looking like. Here. Yeah. And then you have, and then in September you have Atlanta, Orlando, Columbus, Cincinnati. I mean... And then you put Messi, Miami in there. Um, NYCFC is going to be good. You don't know how how good those two teams are. But really, I, and I wrote this down, I think it's eight out of the last 11 opponents were in the playoffs last year. That That's tough. And, I mean, your Western Conference competition, you have mm -hmm. KC. Mm -hmm. um, you got KC. You got Seattle. You have, um, you know, Real Salt Lake. But, you know, Portland's up and down. Minnesota's always a quality team. Um, Austin had a really good season two years ago. They were down this year, but you know, maybe they bounce mm -hmm. back, maybe they don't. Um, it's a it's a it's a challenging season. And of course you have KC in there too. So Union open up regular season play on uh against Chicago on uh Saturday the 24th. So that's gonna be again. Bundle up. <laughs> Bundle up, folks. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, there's there. I think I think what we say there was like just in regular season play alone, including Saprisa's the leg with Saprisa. I think it was was it twenty five thousand miles. So I mean, if they were to make it all the way to the finals, excluding even League's Cup, they're they're right yeah. around forty thousand miles already, and that's not including you know what they mm -hmm. do in League's Cup and playoffs. So a lot of traveling again this year. Um. When you see this, uh, what games are you most excited about? Okay, well, before the schedule is released, we were really hoping for 
some interesting away opponents that, you know, we could do a travel, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to play uh, Portland. I, that was one I really would like to go to, but it's just <laughs> not at a good time of year. Number one, it's in March. Yeah. And March in Portland is not going to be great. And also it's during our state championship meet, which is why we were not at the game, uh, the home game against Orlando last year, right. by the way, when we lost. Sorry, we weren't there. Um, and uh, <laughs> I blame the loss on us not being there in our lucky jerseys, right? But no. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm i actually excited that we're playing Real Salt Lake, although I was really uh, hoping that one would be away because mm-hmm. we wanted to go there. I know. Um, Same with Seattle. Like, there's a two I saw yeah. them. I'm like, like yes. We're playing them, but they're home. Yeah, it's like, darn. I mean, but, oh, well. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we, we go to KC this year. And, uh, you know, there's, let's see. We, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, should we just go into what we're looking at going? To yeah, let's talk Because about that. that's what. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right, right, we're looking at that Nashville game. And we don't even play St. Louis yet, do we? No. No, we still haven't played them. All right. So, um, yeah, our way trips that we're looking at. Nashville. Uh-huh. I think that's what. We're seriously think. considering Nashville. Yeah, I mean, that's not ridiculously far away. No, it's not. And it's on a weekend. I don't, we don't have anything going on. Our swim season actually is on hiatus at that point. Yeah. So, yay. Um. Um, one we're saying yes, we're definitely going. I think is the Montreal away game. Yeah, because um, this is only June twenty ninth, eight nine hour drive, and we can easily go up there. And we had a great time last year in Montreal. And- yeah, and we're excited that it's a summer game. Okay, yeah. and because if it was in the winter, we'd be like, nope. But also, yeah, we're summer vacation, and we loved Montreal, and we went there last August, and uh, that's why we missed the messy game um at the soup but we uh went to the stadium we were outside the stadium mm-hmm. for those of you who didn't see us talk about it on our pod or whatever but um i would yeah i'd just love to go back and we it seems like a lot of people are actually going to go up for that one from talking to people yeah maybe we'll you know throw some stuff out that we you know at least recommendations on mm-hmm. the pod of places to check out that we did yeah um and maybe we'll do something where we'll say, hey, we'll be here at this time, one of the breweries, because there's tons of breweries there, for folks. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch. There is. I, I wouldn't say it's like crazy amounts. It's not like I thought there was when I was looking on Untapped. There was like more than your normal. And we can go to the cat cafe again. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Yes. I, I know some people be into that. Yeah. So. You know, another one we kicked around because your buddy's down there, Charlotte. I, I don't know. Yeah, Charlotte's a possibility. Um, one of my high school friends lives down there. Um, he's a Philly fan. So, um, but you know, we were thinking about that too. Um, the ones that are in like football stadiums, I was just like, meh. But like, um, we'll definitely do Red Bull in DC. Yeah, yeah. we'll go to those. I'd love to do NYCFC, but that's on like a Wednesday it's a, now. On a, it's like on a school night for me, so that's gonna be kind of hard to swing. Um, I'd have to probably take like a half a day at least off of school and, but that's not till my next school year. So, um, so I'll consider it, but that might be one. And we've gone to the NYC in the last like couple of years that's been away. So it's like, I hate to miss that one. Cause that's always good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Another one that's not too far. And I thought about it and we'll see. Um, it, this is like way far away is, um, Toronto because Toronto's not that far of a draw. Yeah, and and actually, um, well, one of our swim families, they originally from Ontario and like yeah. near Toronto, and I'm sure they could give us lots of um info there. They, so maybe we'll go to Canada twice this year. Who knows? Yeah, I've been to Toronto, but I was in high school on a school trip, and so I didn't really get to see much of it. And I would love to um visit it again. So so overall thoughts on the schedule. Um. Well. It, it's just a lot of games and i if uh we don't see the rotation uh and depth that we were lacking this past season it's yeah it could be interesting it could uh, be very interesting no i i think i think um that front half of the schedule, including the back half, is gonna be it's it's gonna be challenging and, and there's really no like oh we got three four the summer at home is going to be good. I think that's going to be kind of where you. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of home games there. You know, if we can get some good points 
early on to kind of give us a nice cushion. Now it'll be helpful. But again, like I said earlier, let's see how the rest of free agency, let's see how the uh, open window plays out. Um, and including all that before yeah. we really get into our predictions and we will be doing our end of the season predictions again mm -hmm. uh and the season beginning of the season uh, which still, will be here before you know it <laughs> it still feels like we're still in last season um yes. but anyway uh reason we didn't have open uh cup on there is because we still don't know what's going on with the open cup no one knows it's up um <laughs> As it was reported, we talked with Kyle, the baby, and Evan, you know, Rick, Derek, DM kind of touched on it. You know, this is when MLS made the announcement that, hey, um, MLS next pro teams are going to be playing in it and not the first teams. All right. And then U.S. Soccer came out and said, not so fast, my friend. Uh, they basically shot it down. They shot it down. So I, I, I. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sure there's going to be a ruling soon. Uh, personally, I mean, I get I get both sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. um, and if you haven't, Jose Nunez, our friend, he has posted some really good content on that. Just about like, you know, some of the thoughts and, and kind of mm -hmm. some of that. Kevin Kincaid brought up a really good point. All right. Yes. And Kevin Kincaid, when this was first announced, it was a very balanced point that MLS maybe is getting to the point now where it's kind of like college football. You know, everybody wants to see the West Virginia versus Marshall, but really kind of West Virginia now. It, yeah, it's a rivalry. Yeah, it's the nostalgia. And I, that's how I feel. I feel it's the nostalgia. I think with the cramped schedule, um, it, it's kind of tough, you know. At the same time, I'm not like, yay, MLS is out of the U.S. Open Cup because – you need to be participating in your domestic tournaments too, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, so it's like a double-edged sword because it's like, yeah, one area, it's really good for U.S. soccer for MLS to be there. But at the same point, you know, it's like, where is MLS yeah. in that? Because let's be honest, outside of like, what was it, Sacramento two years ago playing Orlando mm -hmm. it's usually the finals MLS teams so some people are like oh you know MLS doesn't want to get beat like how uh think... Pittsburgh Riverhounds took out you know our eventual MLS cup winner Columbus I don't think it's that but a lot of people are also like well you know you're keeping this fake cup the league's cup you know the, you got all That's... that out to the schedule but then we're gonna you know basically forget this other tournament that's been around for you know has history basically and i get right. that point too. i i get that point 100 um, my thing is okay so, uh least cup you get three magically appeared conquer calf champions cup spots least cup there's one spot mm -hmm. all right i mean mm -hmm. and the way it's played let's be honest the league's cup is played Kind of like the CC is, C is where we're kind of getting into our season. Mm -hmm. Liga MX is kind of already in their season. So that's why they tend to be a little bit better. Vice versa in Leagues Cup. Now they're kind of getting into their season. We're already in the heart of our season. I think that's, I think Leagues Cup is great. I mean, to kind of give MLS teams a better shot at making some of these concave. We, we've talked about this before. Yeah. what i think really should happen i think mls should leave it up to the clubs say do you want to play your reserves and i know there's probably roster rules and things yeah. we have that you know it's you not think there's a way we can meet them here because i agree with what kyle yeah. said these mls next pro kids are excited to play in this yeah and i think they should have an opportunity because that's where you can really get uh development uh, you know yeah. like you see some of these kids come in. They have a great um, league cup, uh, open cup. Yeah. Now they're vying maybe for more time on the first team. So I also see that argument, and we'll see what happens. But it yeah. is disappointing that MLS didn't have a better exit strategy. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. it just saying, see ya. It like I wish they would have like said we're gonna play have something where. At, you get to a final, yeah, you can put your first team in there and then try yeah. to win it. 
and take it seriously. Maybe semis and finals you take it seriously, but the other time you play reserves, I don't know. Yeah, question. What did you what did you think of the NBA's in season tournament? Uh I did not really watch it. Um half the time I thought when I was following the Timberwolves, I thought they were playing a regular season nah. home game. And then like they lost to Sacramento and they didn't go on even though they won all of their other games and it was really weird like i didn't understand the tournament um from what the podcasts i listened to that are in the media that talked to the players they really enjoyed it yeah. um like i've heard good feedback about it but, but also yeah. those games count towards the regular season yeah so, so it wasn't like they're really not i think maybe and then they added two games and they kind of made up for the other two games that there's there was something where the regular yeah. season this tournament kind of blended um i i really didn't watch it yeah i mean the sixers not to get too off talk but this relates um but yeah i mean like it was fun watching the sixers in that it was weird when the court was all red though like i mean i see they were trying to set apart but um i know i'm not the only one who thought the court looked get it not good um uh, with all the red i mean again it was a different look at first i was just like oh wow but um but um uh, anyway it was interesting but i would be interested to see like rather than basically putting the season on hold for a month do you feel like league's cup could be better set up oh absolutely i think i think you could do it and i think it was renee um even said like you kind of do it like some of these european tournaments where you do it windows throughout the season kind of yeah. like u.s open that cup. just would make more sense rather than putting on it was being in the summer and you know all of that it was fun I, i'm not gonna lie i had fun with the league's cup oh, but at the same fun. time that just it was just you you can't just putting the season on hold for you can't create a tournament to benefit you well you can apparently <laughs> um and then, I don't know, I, I would rather keep the Open Cup and get rid of the League's Cup because there's so much many more games. Yeah. Too. I mean, if the union wants to say, you know what, we're really not going to prioritize. It just dragged the on. And then the playoffs Cup. dragged on. It just all dragged on. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, having said all that, and we're saying very negadelphia right now. Um, I'm very excited for the season. Lots oh, of new, some new like, teams, um, some great trips. So let us know um, where you got, where you listening are planning on going this year. And hey, maybe we'll meet up. So yeah, we had a lot of fun meeting up with people at away games this year, and we would look forward to doing that again, as well as of course at the home games. I mean, when we were at Subaru Park on Monday. I was just like, oh, I miss being here. So we're driving up and we're on 322, like approaching the bridge and getting off the exit. And we're like, there it is. It's like, oh, I missed coming here, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so, and by the way, they have more of the roads like kind of finished and paved around there. Not all the, par the parking lot. Lachi is not. Yeah. Yeah. Start, start, there's start still work to do there. Lots. But um, yeah, it made me like miss being there. So I am excited to get back eventually. Me too. Uh, one last topic. Uh. MLS draft was in uh, this week as well. Union, surprisingly, uh, selected three players. Um, uh, no, uh, and, and I want to give a shout. We're going to link this on um, our show notes here. Uh, Jose, giving him a lot of shouts today. Yeah, he, Jose uh, Nunez. He's been uh, doing some really great interviews with some people. Uh, he had a, a gentleman. I for, my name's slips you know my know how head. Kyle is with names. Yeah. Um, who play. is kind of a scout evaluator, kind of markets these players to clubs and, and talk, works with MLS clubs, had a phenomenal interview with the um, this gentleman talking about our draft, talking about the couple of our signings. Um, overall, I mean, he said, you know, on paper, the ceiling's, you know, right now top 10 team in the draft and mm -hmm. you know with that one um sign prior to i think it was the day of or the day before you know that's could easily be a top five mm -hmm. draft for the union so i mean you get what you got well you signed a so so far we signed a left back from houston mm -hmm. uh the second team from houston um uh, we signed um that midfielder uh, attacking midfield from duke uh, and then we signed forward from Penn in the draft. Well, we drafted him. 
We have the midfielder, attacking midfielder, kind of forward from Stanford. And then we got the goalkeeper from uh, Boston University. So, I mean, overall, it kind of goes back to what I said uh, last episode or two episodes ago with the theme in the postseason press conference was development. And I think the union are really going to post development. Now, let's see how the transfer window goes um yeah i, I mean we're yeah well and we'll see what's what kai and alejandro decide too because that's going to dictate a lot and yes. the longer this drags out the longer you have to start to wonder are they coming back um lots of speculation there is a lot of speculation yeah, at this point Kai working out in his union stuff and there's this speculation that speculation whatever i mean you know, this is the time of the year rumor season's flying right so we don't have games to go to and all we want to do is speculate <laughs> so i'm just gonna say let's see how it plays out and this is a boring answer but let's see how it plays out what happens but uh go check that interview out because the guy really can give a lot more information than jillian and i yeah could. definitely a shout out jose nunez check it out his stuff because he's been putting out some great content but what i, I do want to add one other thing on that is and I, our and our friend todd lewis of the free kick also helping out with that stuff and he's been putting out good stuff too so if you haven't been checking yeah. out these guys definitely um check them out absolutely and one i think for me, I, if nothing else like i think the guy from penn stoss he he could be a nice forward for you too you know um you know, yeah, why'd you get another backup goal? We don't know what's going to happen. Andrew Rick gets sold. Um, you know, maybe Holden doesn't work out. Or maybe Holden, you know, Andre's not going to be here forever. We got to start. Yeah, I mean, we got to. The last thing you want to yeah. do is just kind of keep, keep, keep. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need a goal, backup goalkeeper. Oh, well, Matt Freeze isn't here anymore. So I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep mm -hmm. that competition goalkeeper. And I think that's mm -hmm. what the gentleman mentioned. So, and the thing is, we're going to be missing Andre for some games coming up. I, I mean, and well, we'll see what happens. There's a lot of speculation on uh, could a former union goalkeeper be on his way back? I know some people that say that that is not happening in a million years. But again, yeah. that's speculation. So, uh, that's all for today's episode of One Team We Agree On. But before we go, um, just a quick show note. Uh, coming up next episode, we're going to have some fun. Um, if you're a Marvel fan, you know that the new season of What If is out. Yeah, I'm and just watching it. Last season, we did our What Ifs yeah. um, for the Philadelphia Union. So in that, and some people were like, are you bringing it back in the off season? I'm like, absolutely. So mm -hmm. Probably next episode, we are going to be doing uh, our what ifs for 2023. So, again, if you haven't heard, I think it was two or three episodes ago, um, just send us like, What are your what ifs for us? What do you want us to talk about? Like, I mentioned, this, like, why if, if Andre Blake hadn't been injured early in the season? Would the union have won in Montreal or Orlando? So, those are kind of like the what ifs, and then we'll do our what if and have some fun with it. This is a fun episode. Mm -hmm. Send some fun questions. Um, but yeah, again, make sure to check out Todd Lewis and Jose Nunez's interviews and episodes coming up because there's some really excellent stuff on on their radar as well. So yeah, and well, as it is Christmas Eve Eve when we're recording this, and might be Christmas Eve when you're Listen. listening to it, or you know whatever it, you know, um, just from us, we want to wish everyone who celebrates a Merry Christmas, and. Um, I can't wait to see what Santa brings you, Kyle. Um, I can't wait to see what Santa <laughs> brings you. Um, yes. So there's going to be some fun things, which I'm sure we'll be uh, reviewing at some point. We will. All right. And so that's all for today's episode of One Team We Agree On. And, you know, make sure you subscribe and leave us comments. We love hearing from you. And if you have ideas for uh, topics or guests or anything of that nature, questions for us, please send them our way. We always love hearing from you and getting your input. And until next time, I'm Kyle. I'm Jillian. And we'll see you at the game.